that, that's a good sign. So like, uh, uh, I think most of you have seen the presentation. Like, uh, it's, uh, the conceptually, it's, it's the same what you've seen last year. And uh, you know, like we made a lot of improvements. But the, the whole of 2013 was mainly around the moving the cellular light version to a HTML5 version. <coughs> so I'm just going to keep the, the slides very short, uh, just 10 15 minutes, and then, uh, and then move on to the more the demo, demo features. So I think most of you know know who I am. So, so my name is Saravan Kumar. I'm the original uh, founder of 360, uh, the integration MVP. Like most of the guys going to present for the next two days, all the integration MVPs and the product group. So, so it's, it's uh, taken. And last year I received the award, so integration MVP of the year. So thanks to all the guys who voted for it. Okay, so so I think uh, as I said, like you know, the conceptually, the, the the concepts are still the same. So I just want to you know skip through the, the slides very quickly. So one of the basic reason why we created Bistock 360 is we wanted to give like a real good operation to to manage your uh, Bistock applications. So the, the principle is very same, like very simple. Like once you uh, deploy your applications into production. The current admin console becomes a, it's a challenging to use it for a normal operation person. So it's always, you know, you require a hardcore desktop knowledge, and it's not easy to uh, give it to people who are not familiar with, uh, with desktop. And also there is no notion of, you know, you can't, you can't give that tool to a business, business user. So it's, a, it's, a, it's basically, you know, it's a, tech, it's a tech, technology focus tool. So that's one thing we wanted to address in, in, in Vista 360. So let me bring all the points up. So I mean, the, the, the very the first thing is like <coughs> as I mentioned, like uh, we wanted to make sure you know like uh, people who are not familiar with Vista should be able to uh, manage your uh, your Vista environments. So you know, it's, uh, getting resources is really difficult, and especially Vista resources is not easy. And you don't want to tie up your Vista resources doing just a day-to-day -day support activity. So you want them to use it for something productive, like do some new integration and stuff like that. So, so that's, a, that's a point we wanted to tackle with the basic first thing. <laughs> the next is around uh, governance and auditing. So this is not the runtime governance; it's more of an operational governance. So you know, if somebody stops a endpoint or somebody starts a host instance, so those things are not audited in the current uh, tooling that comes out of this stuff. So it becomes a challenge for a lot of uh, companies. The, the bigger the company, the bigger the team you have, it becomes a real problem. You know, like you basically run your uh, environment on trust, right? So you trust all your guys, and you hope they don't do anything wrong. So that's how most of the district environments are run now. So that's a thing we want to tackle with the uh, governance and audit. The third is around uh, security uh, uh, and authorization. So it's, 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 it's a twofold, basically. The one is... Uh, you know, the, the current authorization model on the on the operation side is using the Bistock admin group and the Bistock operators group. You know, in order to ask the question, you know, like how many of you run your uh, uh, support using the operators group? And probably <coughs> there won't be any hands going up. So, you know, the thing is everybody will be in the administrator's group and people will have RDP access to your servers and they'll have access to the, all the SQL server. And that's how the current operation is running. So that's the thing we want to change. So that's one aspect of security. And the next aspect of security is, uh, is around tooling. Like if you look at the way the support people uh, uh, or do support for Bistock, they'll have about seven to 10 different tools. You know, like Bistock Admin Console, SQL Management Studio, uh, BAM Portal, ESB Portal, Message Box Viewer, uh, Management Console, <coughs> even viewers across multiple boxes. So they need like the seven or uh, seven to ten different tools to do it. So you can imagine setting up security at all those places and managing them. So we just wanted to consolidate everything into one tool, and then it's ma it makes it easy to uh, to do that. As sharing Bistock environments is a real challenge. Like uh, you know, like a Bistock, it's a it's a relatively expensive product. It's, a, it's it's not as expensive as some of the competitors, but it is a, it's a platform. So you know you're talking something in the range of hundred and fifty thousand dollars to uh, to set up a reasonable platform. So a couple of desktop servers with you know four or five CPUs and uh, and a couple of SQL servers, Windows license. So once you have that level of investment, you wanted to reuse it as much as possible. Uh, but with the lack of with the, with the current tooling, it's it's nearly impossible. For example, you know, like if you have like 50 applications deployed in your uh, in your environment, there is no easy way to segregate. You know, team A is responsible for five applications, team B is responsible for other five applications. 
So once it gives them access to admin console, they're able to see everything, and then it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. So a lot of times, typically what happens is that, there, is that once you deploy something very mission critical into your uh, into your desktop platform, people normally don't use it for any anything else. Like you know, like uh, we, even though there may be enough capacity in the environment, like uh, there is uh, enough uh, power to, to deploy more, just because the tooling is not correct, uh, they won't be able to deploy it. So that's one thing. The final is around uh, monitoring and notifications. You know, best of, it doesn't come out of the box with any monitoring, so the, the recommended way is to use COM. And they got a really good management pack. You know, like if you know how to use it, it's not a problem. You can go configure <coughs> it. But the problem is, SCOM is a complex product, and Bistock is another complex product. And to find somebody who can understand both and come up with a strategy is a, is a real problem. So it's not, a, it's, a not, it's not a money thing. So a lot of times, you know, companies we have seen, like uh, they have SCOM, but they don't know how to use it for Bistock. So what we have done with 360 is we took that as a point and then we made it very, very simple to configure it. Um, and, uh, and also it's, it, it comes as part of a single operation tool, so you're not you know, relying on something external. So, so one of the, the design principles for us is you know, to make it as a single operations and monitoring tool. So once your application gets to production, so we have seen the, the the tool itself is built through our experience. Like like personally, I've been <coughs> working in Bistock since 2004, and uh, every time we go to a customer, and we, we always end up doing some kind of a minimal management tool to 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 cope for the customer requirements. So that that's why like in back in 2010 we decided okay let's go with the the tool. There's a clear gap in the market, and uh, that's how Bistock 360 started. It's a four year old company. So we got four main pillars of Bistock 360, security, operations, uh, data access, and monitoring. So let me quickly go through it. So the security aspect, I already <coughs> briefly touched it. So, so this is basically, you know, like uh, on, the, on, the, on the right hand side, like uh, from my right hand side, you can see Tom. It, you know, every company will have somebody like Tom. So there's no problem for Tom to, you know, access every single application uh, in, in your environment. So it's not a problem, but we don't have too many Toms in the company, right? So, so that's a problem. So, so what we have done is, you know, you have John, maybe HR. He probably is not even a, not even a technology guy. Uh, so, you know, like how can you give him access to the admin console? You can't give, like you know, like a, like a, a lot of things. Are basically, you know, like. A, Normally, the companies will have very limited Bistock resources. Like, if you have like ten people in your company working on Bistock, that must be a really, really large scale implementation, right? So, when you have a constrained scenario like that, you wanted to make take advantage of other people in the company. So that's what we did. So John, maybe just from a business user from HR, so we can give like a very limited access to John, and he will only be able to see things which are relevant to him in a very controlled way, like, you know, like, uh, you, you can see this application, and also if it does something, like, you know, start something or stop something, you, you will, you, you, everything is audited and you know exactly, like, uh, you know, what action he has done. So same for Claire from finance, so she, you know, you can give, give her a different level of access. So, you know, the, the main idea is, you know, you're not just limited to Bistock operators and Bistock administrators group. So it's just, a, you know, open configuration, like, you, you define your own rules, so you say, okay, this is your BPM dev team, this is your BPM workflow team, or something like that, and you define the rules for how they are going to access the environment. So you can see there are a lot of checkboxes. You can pretty much configure like the way how you want to, want to configure it. And you can either do it at an individual user level or at a, at a, at a group level. So this I briefly touched. It's a view, the, one of the design goals for us is to make it single operational console. So it's a real pain point, you know, like uh, if you take somebody on your team and for them to get used to your uh, support procedures, it takes three to six months because you use different tools for different things, like uh, you, the Bistock Admin Console is a very obvious one. Then you got SQL Management Studio, people need to run some kind of basic queries. They wanted to make sure the jobs are running correctly. They want to make sure the, the, the message box size is not too much. And so they need to have access to SQL Management Studio. And if you're using BAM, you'll be, need access to BAM portal. And event viewer is a very obvious one. You know, like uh, that's that's the first point of contact after admin console to look at for your errors. So so you need to have access to it. So you can see, like you know, like you will use anywhere from seven to ten different tools for your support. So we just want to you know consolidate everything into into one tool. So you can see uh, you got uh, 
advanced event viewer, ESB exceptions, BAM, uh, message box. Uh, so pretty much everything, what, all the external tools, we just brought it into this one single tool. So it makes it it's a very much more protected, and security is good, and they, they don't need to, uh, onboarding somebody is, is much, much more quicker. And we also built a lot of uh, little tools uh, inside. So all these things, uh, it's all part of Vista 360. We have only one product, Vista 360, which comes with all these tools. So advanced event viewer is, uh, is a one thing. Uh, you know, <coughs> the, the Vista <coughs> as such, a, what it does is it basically asks you to you know, use the Windows event, event viewer to do diagnose your, your problems. But the problem with that is, you know, like once you have like a really big environment, say you have four servers or six servers, something like that, and if you're trying to diagnose a problem, that problem could persist in any any of the boxes, right? So normally you log in RTP into those boxes, and you check event viewer, you try to correlate events between them, and it's a time consuming time consuming process. So what we've done is we built advanced event viewer. We basically collects all the BizTalk related stuff into uh, into a new single place. And you can query from a single place, and it's all within the web UI. So you don't need to actually RDP into, into, the, into the boxes. And integrated knowledge base is, a, is another thing. Uh, you know, like a lot of times, you know, being a middleware, uh, there will always be problems, right? It's nothing to do with the code. It's because, you, of course, when you're, when you're talking to 10 different systems, problem could come in multiple <coughs> factors. Uh, one simple thing, you know, like a, you, your partner is always sending a message with some junk ASCII email address or something. And it breaks and it suspends in your in your environment, and you can't fix it. It's an operational problem. So what you can do, you can attach a knowledge base. So when that particular error happens, for that particular uh, service instance ID, you say this is happening for so and so reason, and then when that happens again the next time, so you automatically so when the support person opens that uh, service instance, so they will have that information ready. So. So you know, like a lot of companies use you know external wiki or SharePoint, and the problem is when the problem is happening at that point, nobody is going to you know look at your SharePoint or wiki to see whether this problem exists. So this one, it's right on the tool, so you know it makes it uh, much more protected. Uh, we also have custom SQL queries. In a lot of times, say, people use uh, some standard uh, SQL queries. Uh, like you may be querying your management database or a tracking database or BAM database, so it's all your standard SQL queries. So at the moment, you need to have access to SQL Management Studio to run it. And again, it is the trust factor comes into, into the picture now, because you're trusting the guys won't run any nasty SQL on, on, on your system databases, right? So you may restrict access only to select statement, but even some of the select statement could also be nasty, right? Like, you know, you could select star from Blah, and then if that table got like you know two million records or something, so it would have an impact on your runtime uh, performance. So we have something called custom SQL queries. So you say well, one of your DBAs can write and store in well-known queries in, in 360, and you can give permission who can actually execute those queries. So you're, you're giving much more in a restricted access to, to your environment. So also the other other factor is you know the, the bigger the company you go, like it's very hard to get your DBA teams approval, right, to have access to databases. So this way, you know, like your, the, the DBA teams can write the query and give, give your uh, uh, desktop team uh, access to, to those queries. And we also have a graphical message flow viewer. So this is uh, basically, we have, you don't need to do any development for this. What we have done is we just took the tracking data. It's already collected by desktop and we put it in a very nice uh, graphical way. So when you go to admin console, you know, you right click and say message flow, you basically get a text-based view, right? And it's very difficult to understand. So again, it's just coming to the same principle of, you know, like a, you don't need a BizTalk super expert to understand how the message flows through the system. So it's basically, you double click and then you know exactly, you know exactly like how the message is traveling from A to B, uh, uh, so in a graphical way. So with that, you can easily teach people, even your business users, okay, you know, you click, 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 and this is how the message travels from your, SAP system to Oracle system or something like that. We also got some uh, health check tools, you know, uh, backup DR visualizer. And still there are challenges, there's a couple of things, right? So first one, you need to set it up properly, and the second is uh, you need to periodically check and make sure it's all working correctly. Like what typically happens, you, you configure it, and then you don't check it. And when the real DR happens, you know, like you don't know, like you know, probably your DR didn't work for the last three months, and you start from scratch. So we provide toolings to you know like uh, visualize it and, and just to give a hint, <coughs> the backup and DR is working correctly. 
This is your history records on both sides, and we just make it make it simple. We also have a throttling analyzer. This throttling is again, you know, <coughs> like a, you must be a real super expert, right, to understand throttling. It's a nothing nothing wrong because you know, like uh, it's it's one of the you know hard core things. It's, it's a lot of uh, uh, you need to know which exactly like what counters to look for, what values they are emitting. For example, you know, it, it may emit uh, number two, uh, which is maybe a rate based throttling. So you need to understand what is number two. So it's, it's a, it, again, it's coming to the same point. You need to be a district expert to understand certain things. So we just got a very simple UI. So it just you know, gives a graphical view and say whether your environment is a, it's a, it's in a good condition or under throttling condition. And you can drill down and see like, a, and it will tell you, OK, you, you know, your configured host value is 300 megabytes, but it's trying to use 320 megabytes. So it, that's why it went into process memory throttling state. So it just a, Again, you don't need to be a super expert, so you can visualize it and click it, and then and then you will, you will get the message. And also, we integrated with uh, with the message box viewer, so you know, like a lot of people may be using message box viewer already. So, so you can schedule it, so you know, you can run it every day at midnight or something, and you can see the report right in the UI. And also, this one one important other feature is that you can also set up monitoring based on uh, on message box viewer. So this is very, very powerful. For example, you know, patching is one of the problem, right? Like, you know, somebody applies a Windows patch on your environment, and that breaks something. And you know, like, message box viewer can pick up those kind of scenarios because it got rules to validate that, whether you're running on the right CU pack or, you know, right SQL service pack and things like that. So, so the message, so, we, so, so this integration, you can say, if the message box viewer reports so many critical errors in the last run, then you can, you can get more by. We also got the monitoring dashboard. So I think probably like what I'll do is I'll just uh, go through the demo quickly. Uh, so the, before going, this is the last slide. I just want to cover some important uh, aspects. So when it comes to monitoring, like uh, since we are 100 percent focused on BizTalk, we cover certain aspects of uh, monitoring which is very very specific to uh, BizTalk requirements. So one thing is is a process monitoring. Uh, so the, the, the example scenario we give is you know. You, you are a bank and then you know you have a lot of branches all over the place and the branch is sending you know, like one batch file every day. Like at midnight they send a, send a batch file. So what happens when you know, if they didn't send it last night? You know, like uh, nothing happens in your environment, right? Everything looks good because uh, nothing processes and there's no problem. But from a functional point of view, you know it's a problem because you didn't process the message you are supposed to process. So. So that kind of thing you can monitor using Vista 360. So you can say you're expecting so many messages, say five messages every hour, or you know, 100 messages in a day. Uh, you know, nine to five is your business day, Monday to Friday, something like that. And if that scenario is, is not met, then you will get notified automatically. So that's a, so it's a lot of banking and insurance companies, they fall under this problem. So, so that's a, it's a useful scenario. The other thing is uh, the service instances monitoring. You know, like we have seen like some of our customers who got like, you know, some people keep the group up page open, keep refreshing it to see, you know, like uh, how many instances are failing. So those things can be can be automated. So you can say, if this application A got 50 suspended instances, then you can alert somebody. And, then, and it's not just suspended instances, it could be any, any state, you know, it could be uh, active state, dehydrated state, whatever state. So if you predict an, uh, predict a condition which is not uh, uh, not the usual one, so you, you can configure and, and get alerted. And another important aspect we have is called negative monitoring. You know, like a, uh, in, a, in a production environment, you normally expect everything to be running, right? Like, uh, no, right, that's right. <laughs> okay, how many of you got uh, host instances in a disabled state? In a, yeah, okay. No, it's, it's a very common scenario in a BizTalk environment. It's not just host instances. We have seen people keeping received locations in disabled state, send ports in disabled state, because there are business requirements for that. You know, if you if you are a HR company and you process all, all your messages only on the first day of each month, so you don't want somebody to go and start the FTP receive location in the middle of the month or something. So those kind of things you can you can configure the negative monitoring side. So you know, if somebody accidentally starts it, you can get alerted. So I think, yeah, I'll uh, just go through the, the demos very quickly. So those are the, the slides. <coughs> okay, so we 
we moved from black to white. So last year it was black, silver light, it's all black, black. So a lot of people complained <coughs> about that. So we decided to move to white. So it says this is a new HTML5 interface. It's all you know like a completely ported from a silver, complete rewrite. So, so we spent majority of 2013 moving from silver light to HTML5. So so this is a, a you know the, the the standard dashboard like as soon as you as you log in so you know like you, you see uh, whenever there is something problem in your environment you will see the red things so in this case maybe some host instances are not running so that applies to everything so whenever there is a problem you get highlighted and the idea is you know like to try to give you uh, as much information as possible from a support point of view so one thing I want to show you is the is the uh, uh, the user access policy thing. So, so in this case, uh, for example, you know, uh, I logged in as uh, myself, so it's under my name, and I'm the super user, and I got access to all these uh, different applications uh, running in, uh, in this local environment. So what we have is, 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 uh, is a super user access policy thing. So let me go to user access policy, and there's a guy called Mike Watson, and if I go to edit, uh, and uh, you can have multiple permissions, so for this guy got access to certain applications, and he got access to, to a couple of things. So what I've done is I just impersonated the user in a different browser, so I just go to IE, and here you can see, like, even though they're actually accessing exactly the same environment, so their UI looks completely different. So this guy, Mike Watson, he got only access to certain things, and you can go to applications, only HR and whatever application you got access to uh, is uh, visible, and you go to one of them and put a dashboard at that level, and you can go to send ports, and uh, you can see all the information, but you can see he doesn't have access to you know, uh, start or stop or do anything. So if you want to give pure read-only access to, to somebody, you can, you can do that with the 360. But if, if you go back to the, the original super user mode, and if you go to the applications, and if you open the same EDI application, and if you go to send ports, uh, you can see uh, the options are available for me to start, stop, uh, things like that. So, so you can, you can do that. Uh, I'm just going to stop this whole application. Uh, I think it's already stopped. So, so if, you, if you've done the same thing with, with the <coughs> so basically, you know, like, uh, there won't be any auditing. You don't know, like, I stopped these things in a production environment. But with 360, you've got the full governance capability. So you go, go to applications, and you can see all these things are being audited. So whatever you do in the environment, so it's, it's all, it all gets, uh, gets audited. <coughs> And the, the monitoring and notification, I will just uh, cover it very quickly. Um, so, as I said, the, the, one of the main objective for us is to make it really simple to, to configure monitoring. So, I'm just going to do it live here. So, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, manage alarms. So we've got this concept called uh, alarms. So, I'm just going to give a name. Uh, maybe summit demo and I can give a bunch of email addresses. I'm going to just say hotmail for now. Uh, this is just a, you know, you define a friendly name and then you give the, the list of email addresses uh, to, to, to know <coughs> about. And we got uh, two different types of alerts. One is a threshold alert. So this is basically when things go wrong, you wanted to get uh, notified. There are various parameters. Uh, you can say, for example, how long the, 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 the error condition persists. So you don't want to get notified for like, intermittent issues. So if something gets rectified automatically in a couple of minutes, so you're not too concerned about it, so you can put a persist duration, maybe 20 minutes or something. For this demo, I'm going to put two minutes. And also you can restrict it to, you know, like you don't want to get alerted. Some Depending on the nature of the business, you don't want to get alerted at the middle of the night or something. So if you want, you can set that as well, like a window, like when you want it to monitor. So in this case, I'm just going to leave default. I just change this one. And also the next, uh, the set of alert we do is uh, something called status alert or a health check alert. You know, like a, a lot of you, like how many of you do daily health checks? You log into the system and then make sure things are working correctly, right? So it's a common thing, it's an operational thing. Like, you know, you have a dedicated guy, log into the box and, you know, make sure everything is working. You can automate that using 360. So for example, Monday to Friday at 10 o'clock, I want a report of my environment. You can, see, you can say that and you can say what you wanted to get in that report uh, based on the and we also got some advanced things like you can notify HP operation managers. You know, like a lot of companies use HP OpenView or HP operation manager as a preferred uh, monitoring solution. And their BizTalk pack is, uh, uh, by the way, HP is our customer. So they are using 360 for, uh, for monitoring. So, 
so you can, you can set alerts straight, straight to HP and we got some advanced features. So I'm going to leave it uh, as it is. So I just created an alarm. So what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to applications and maybe I'll choose the EDI application. And I'm going to choose the, uh, the alarm I just created, the summit demo. And then you can go to orchestration and click all the orchestration say, I wanted to make sure they're all running. So basically you configure monitoring now. So it's just you know, five minutes and then you're there. So there's no complex agent setup or anything. So I just want to make it very, very simple. Uh, you just uh, you should be able to do it in a, and uh, the main thing is it's all under one console. Like you've got operations, monitoring, everything within one single console. So just making it, making it easy. So you can go to send ports and say, I wanted to monitor this, may make sure it's started. Uh, so it's all stopped. So that's why you're getting errors. And I could go to, for example, BizTalk server. And I say, you know, this is, it automatically picks up all the servers in the group, and I can say, okay, this is the server, and still I'm having the same alarm. And I wanted to make sure the disks are okay, so I can put, you know, percentage, like when it's a warning level, the error level. You can see I'm just clicking here and there to <coughs> configure the monitoring. So I can say system resources, I can say I want to monitor CPU and memory. I can go to NT services and say, you know, I, I can pick uh, some of them, and then whatever, like if you want to more, keep an eye on, Enterprise single sign-on, EDA services, or your own services, make sure they're running. So you can, you can select them and say, it must be running. E event log is very, very powerful. You can do a lot of things with event log. So for example, I can say I wanted to monitor all the <coughs> desktop related events happening uh, in, the, in the system. So I can pick up all the sources, uh, desktop related sources. Uh, Scroll properly. So, for example, you know, you select all the BizTalk related sources, and then you can see you can put a threshold, uh, 10 errors or 10 warnings in the last uh, 30 minutes or something, and then and then you, once it's done, it, it keeps monitoring. And also, you can do really interesting things here. Like if you wanted to make, keep an eye on, you know, a sneaky developer deploying some stuff into your, system, right? <laughs> so you can have put a, you know, more, you can monitor for the MSI source and see if somebody is actually deploying something. So you get audited automatically. So so you can do those kind of things. So but the, the thing is, we wanted to make it very very simple. You know, the configuration is very simple, and you should be able to do it very very quickly. And the SQL Server, the same concept. And SQL Server instances, you can monitor all the jobs very quickly. You can say uh, must be enabled, and also you can select and say you know the last state must be successful. So you can see you just click click click, and it's all focused purely on desktop. You know, so that makes it very simple to you know to con to configure. At the best environment level, uh, you can monitor all the uh, all the host instances. For example, must be started. And if you're having a lot of uh, you know so or uh, HTTP based uh, endpoints, you can monitor. For example, I can say I wanted to monitor Microsoft.com. Uh, Microsoft. Oops. Uh, expected state is 200. Okay, invalid URL. Maybe made a mistake there. Yeah, okay. Right, so 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 the, basically you can watch any any HTTP endpoints. We have a lot of web services, you can make sure they're all up and running. A database is very powerful. You can you can monitor, for example, depth of the pool table or whether you have received an ad or whatever possible, you know, it's very powerful. And message box viewer, as I mentioned, you know, you can you can make sure you know the message box viewer is returned a really healthy. Uh, report in the last run. So, so, so the idea is basically like we want to make it very, very simple. And what you get is uh, once it's all configured, of course, you get a notification, and also you you get uh, something like this. So, so you can put it on a big screen, and we got too many reds because that's how we configured it. But in a really good environment, you should have everything green, and you will have whenever you got warnings, uh, you, you will uh, you will see it. Okay, uh, that's on the, on the monitoring side, and uh, of course, we, you know, we've got all this uh, standard things, what you would expect in an operation tool, like you know, querying the message box, uh, message box queries, uh, tracking data queries, you know, BAM, uh, you can, it's, all, it's all in one place, you can go to BAM views and d d dive into the, into the data, uh, custom SQL queries, as I mentioned. Uh, so all disabled receive locations. Uh, if you look at this one, it's a very very standard uh, SQL statement. So you know you can you can put all those bunch of useful SQL statements in one place, and you can make it make it really really productive. 
Uh, the ESB, if you're using ESB portal, the exception ESB exceptions are right in the, in the in the UI, so you don't need to you know struggle with the sample ESB applications to actually configure it. Mm -hmm. So it's there. So the advanced event viewer, as I mentioned, you know you, you can execute it. You know you're basically querying all your event viewer in your whole environment from the single place within. This is in, in a web, web interface. And we also have a capacity to, you know, like you can go and attach a knowledge base. You know, if this particular event is happening for a known problem, you can put a knowledge base, and that will be available next time uh, when you when you see the, see the gather. So I think, uh, yeah, most of the stuff, you know, I'm not, not going to go through the full list. I think you have seen the, the full picture. So one thing I wanted to show you is the is the, is the Pistol 360 for managed services. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm just going to log into uh, our portal. So this is actually it's a it's a public portal. So manage.bistro360.com. Uh, so it uh, it's, it's what's against the Windows Active Directory. So I'm just going to log in as a co. Uh, Right, so this is really interesting. You need to pay attention. <laughs> okay, it's the internet. Hope the internet. Okay. Username was wrong. What? Username was wrong. No. Oh, why? Right, so, so we are inside. So basically, the, the way it's going to work is, it's, you know, every consulting company, they'll have a bunch of users, and they, and they log into the system, and they can manage multiple of their customer sites. For example, here they got uh, three customer sites, and you can see none of them are live at the moment. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this code. And I'm going to my, so this is my local instance, right? This is the, it's my la local laptop. So I'm going to settings. Service bus registration. Okay. Right, so it's all hooked up now. So what I've done is, you know, like uh, my local laptop, as long as I have an internet connectivity, it hooked up and it exposed the traces to the outside world. So now I'm going back to the portal now. I'm going to refresh it. So my laptop is live now to manage from anywhere in the world. Right? So, so I need to do one more thing. So it says not mapped. So go to user access policy, service bus identity, and I'm going to use that user. Okay, so it's now it's ready to be managed by from anywhere in the world. So I'm going to click on customer one. Yeah. Right. So so basically, you know, like uh, so now, as long as you got internet connectivity, so you can manage my laptop. As, you know, as long as the, that box is connected to a to a ne to a network like internet. So you can manage it from a, from a public place. So this eliminates you know, a lot of you, the consulting companies, they have managed services contract with their customers, and, uh, and it requires a lot of effort like VPN and Citrix and those kind of things to, to manage them remotely. But this one, it's, it's a very, very simple. And this is actually you know, it's a, just an add-on. Like we have a lot of those bunch of stuff I uh, did the demonstration before. So this basically, you know, like it's just a small flavor we added in, in the recent release, so it makes it, you know, very very easy. So you know, so this is the username password, and you, you can try it now. So basically, you know, like you are control anybody can control my laptop. Okay. 
Okay, I think yeah, I just wanted to, you know, like I don't want to bombard you with uh, too much information. Do you have got any any questions like uh, whether you have in the, your roadmap that you will support call and stop procedure? Okay. And uh, the second one is uh, whether you are able to limit the user to uh, you can you can now limit the user to viewing certain applications, but can you also limit the user to what kind of host instances they can see and what they can do with them. The, the host instances, it's all already there. So for example, if you have 10 applications, and if you use access to four applications, the, the logical mapping is already calculated by 360. So they will only be able to start and stop host instances, which are applicable to those four applications for which they got permission to. But are you able to limit them to not uh, stopping them? Yeah, you, you, you can do that. So if you, let me go back to my knowledge. Because you might have a host instance that runs several applications. So you wouldn't want him to stop it and stop it. Yeah, you, you, you can do that. So <coughs> you go to settings, uh, user access policy, uh, edit. So this one can operate on. If you, if you don't check this box, then they won't have access to managing any host instances. And the store procedure, it's, it's, it's on the pipeline here. Yeah. Yeah. Does any customer data leave the physical box? Uh, the, the way it works is that, that managed portal is a proxy. So we don't move any data from your customer to the cloud or anything. But but you know that the transit data will be there. So it's all real time. So yeah, it's, it's all real time. Yeah, we don't store anything on, on, our, on our site. Yeah. So from a customer point of view, that, that's going to be the biggest concern. Their data through the monitoring but, tools get migrated. Yeah, so yeah, we don't move the data, but I think that's the risk, you know, like uh, that's the only, only way you, you can do it. Actually, like when, when you're setting up uh, the, the service instances monitoring, for example, you know, you've got the warning and error level. For example, let me try this one. You know, like you got a current count is 9, so the warning count is, for example, 10. You can say, okay, you know, like I want to enable this one, and I say, you know, if it's number 5, it's a warning. If it goes to 200, for example, it's a, it's a real dangerous situation, so you can, you can do that. Okay. And you'll get um, emails to each one of them? Yeah. Right. So, they, so this, again, in the email of the subject, or so you get something like that, you will get warning <coughs> threshold and error threshold? No, you'll get only warning. If it's, for example, if it's 9 at the moment, and uh, you set the warning at 5, so when it, once it reaches, say, from, from 6 onwards, We'll get an email saying, okay, the suspended instances count is at a warning level. Right. Once it reaches 200, then, then you will get a error.